kindly maintain silence as you can see in the screen the dignitaries have arrived they will be here shortly kindly maintain silence those who are still standing i request you to immediately be seated can we have silence can we have silence please kindly be seated all of you including the staff members can we all be seated silence please the ones who are standing please do sit down thank you very much the dignitaries have arrived thank you very much
prayer please neeraarum kadaludutta nilamadandai kedilolugum seerarum badanamena thigal barada kandamidil tekkanamum adil sirandha dravidanar tirnaadum தக்க சிறு பிறை நுதலும் தரித்தனரும் திலகமுமே அத்திலக வாசனை போல் அனைத்துலகும் என்பமுற எத்திசையும் புகழ் மணக்க இருந்த பெரும் தமிழனங்கே தமிழனங்கே உன் சீரிழமை திரும்பியல்து செயல் மறந்து வாழ்த்துதுமே 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 ஜய ஸ்ரீராம கிருஷ்ண தேவா ஜய ஜய சத்குரு ஜய ஸ்ரீராம கிருஷ்ண தேவா மயலால் மீடியுண்டு வாழும் கோவலயம் தயவால் உயிர் தோங்க தோன்றிய முகிலே ஜய ஸ்ரீராம கிருஷ்ண தேவா சாந்தம்படியுமுன் சந்நிதி வந்ததும் சந்தேகம் சஞ்சலம் சாம்பலாய் போயின காந்தி சுடர் விடும் கருணாரூபனே கை கொடுத்திங்களை கரையேற்றுமை அனே ஜய ஸ்ரீராம கிருஷ்ண தேவா பெண் கல்வி பெறவே வித்திட்டார் அவினாஷிலிங்கம் ஐயா பெண் கல்வி பெறவே வித்திட்டார் ஆணுக்கு நிகராக பெண்ணும் கல்வி கற்றாள் சாதனை சிகரத்தில் சாரதாலய பெண்கள் பெண் கல்வி பெறவே வித்திட்டார் பல்கலைக்கழகத்து பாடசாலையில் பல்துறை சார்ந்த பண்பாட்டு கல்வி கணினி அறிவியல் தொழில்நுட்பம் கலையன அகிலத்த வரலாற்றில் அவினாஷிலிங்க பெண்கள் அவினாஷிலிங்கம் பல்கலைக்கழகம் ஆழி சோழ் உலகில் வாழிய 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 I invite the Vice Chancellor to give the welcome address and report. Good morning, most esteemed Chief Guest of the 33rd Convocation, Her Excellency Honorable Judge of Supreme Court of India, Srimati B. V. Nagaratna, Distinguished Managing Trustee of the Avinasha Lingam Educational Trust Institutions, Dr. T. S. K. Meenakshu Sundaramanna, Honorable Chairman of the Convocation and the Chancellor, Prof. S. P. Thiagarajan, Sir, our special guest for today, Thiru S. Balu, Additional District Judge and Special Judge, Coimbatore, Mr. Sendil Raja, Judicial Magistrate, Coimbatore, members of the Trust, Board of Management, Registrar, Controller of Examination, Members of the Academic Council, Finance Officer, 
public relations officer, deans and directors, IQAC coordinators, heads of departments, faculty members, assistant registrars, and administrative staff, honored graduates, and their proud parents, alumni, friends from media, good morning, vanakkam, and namaste. It is my great honor and privilege to welcome you all to the 33rd convocation of our institute. At the outset, I extend my heartiest congratulations to each one of you. Honorable Madam Justice, the Institute is greatly honored by your luminary presence today. For all of us to know some of the positions held by Madam as a judge of the High Court of Can Karnataka include President Karnataka Judicial Academy, Chairperson Committee Overseeing Commercial Courts, Administrative Judge, City Civil Court, Bangalore, Chairperson Journal Justice Committee and Chairperson Committee Overseeing Implementation of POXO Act, to name a few. On behalf of the Sharada Laya family, I extend a very warm welcome to you, Madam. And would like to add that our graduates are indeed fortunate to have a professional of such high caliber to inspire them on a momentous day in their lives. Before I move on to present the report, I pay my respects to the guiding spirits, Dr. T. S. Avinashalinga Mayavargal and Dr. Rajamal P. Devdas Amakavargal, the sculptors of this temple of learning. I also submit my humble salutations and welcome to our managing trustee, Anna Avargal, and our chancellor, under whose leadership we are witnessing this momentous event today. Today's convocation will award degrees to a total of 2,734 graduates, including 72 PhDs, 22 MPhils, 546 postgraduates, 2,048 undergraduates, and 46 PG diplomas in various disciplines. Our institute has demonstrated time and again the value of equity, expansion, and excellence in teaching, research, and extension activities. Further, the institute has judiciously drafted Vision 2040 as per the Sustainable Development Goals and the National Education Policy 2020, which includes proactive measures towards women empowerment. Madam, kindly permit me to present a very brief report of our achievements during the last one year. For details of the report, please see the enclosed report in front of you. As an institution, our significant achievements include the highest A++ grade with CGPA of 3.65 out of 4 by the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, fifth rank under the Atal Ranking of Institution on Innovation Achievement, 75th rank in the National Institutional Ranking Framework, and the Bharat Ratna Professor C. N. R. Rao Research Center has been certified with ISO on our quality management system. As far as the academic programs are concerned, three undergraduation, one postgraduation, one PG diploma, and nine value-added courses have been introduced this year. In addition, 14 international and national conferences, seven faculty development programs, 52 national workshops, 13 student workshops, and 31 special lectures have been organized by various departments. To foster the innovation ecosystem, the Avinashalingam Innovation and e Incubation Center has been established, and we already have 24 incubators and have MOUs with prominent institutions, including MSME, CII, EDII, to name a few. In terms of patents, a total of six patents got awarded, and 12 patents were published during the academic year. In research initiatives, 
there are 20 ongoing funded research projects amounting to rupees 3.49 crores sponsored by DST, UGC, ICSSR, AICTE, to name a few. And also, 82 new project proposals have been submitted in the last year. 12 consultancy projects with an outlay of rupees 1.08 crores have been brought in. The Directorate of Research and Development, a centralized facility, has been established. And also as a unique feature, our institute has invited five mentors in various disciplines from eminent institutions to develop our research, consultancy, and innovation. I'm happy to say that four international MOUs and six national MOUs have been signed in the last year. Our research scholars have made us proud by winning fellowships from UGC, ICSSR, International Young Researcher Award, paid international internships, postdoctoral fellowships, and best paper and poster awards in 11 conferences. Our faculty, after all, are the ones who trained our students. A total of 1,953 conferences, seminars, workshops have been attended by our faculty members, which shows their continuous learning aptitude. And they have published 210 publications with 114 Scopus indexed and 57 Web of Science index journals. And this has significantly improved our H index as well as our citation index. And the faculty award list is extensive. So 40 of our faculty members have got the best teacher award, and 13 have won the best presentation paper award. And from institutions such as IIT Kharagpur, Sydney University, INSO Awards, Cognizant Foundation, the All India Federation of master printers, and one of our faculty has won the prestigious Lieutenant Colonel rank. Our student placement this year, thank you. Our student placement this year have included 43 recruiters who have already recruited 426 students, and we have 23 more recruiters in the coming weeks and days. And 15 of our students have won commendations at national and international level. We are not an all work and no play institution. A dedicated sports facility in our satellite campus has enabled our students to win gold medals in South Asian Federation of Sports, National Virtual Yogasana Championship, National Light Contact Kickboxing Competition, to name a few. Our NCC cadets have made us proud by participating in the RC parade, but our cadet has also won the Prime Minister's Rally Medal and Rajpath Medal in the 73rd Republic Day parade. The value that we have embedded helps our students to undertake NSS activities, and we have conducted mega COVID vaccination drive, benefiting one lakh people, and all the flagship programs of the government have been undertaken by us, including Swachh Bharat, Poshan Abhyan, Ayushman Bharat, benefiting 4,000 people. Dear graduates, you stand at the threshold of change. Learn to embrace change with grace and wisdom. Recalibrate your energies and focus to tune in to the expectations of the professional world. However, it is important that the thirst for success should be fueled with a sense of purpose and societal good. Before I close my address, I would like to draw your attention to not a very happy tweet, but certainly a very meaningful tweet about a letter that was found in a Nazi concentration camp addressed to teachers. Dear teacher, I am a survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes have seen what no man should witness. Gas chambers built by learned engineers. 
children poisoned by educated physicians, infants killed by trained nurses, women and babies shot and burnt by high school and graduate, college graduates. So I'm suspicious of education. My request is help your students become human. Your efforts must never be to produce learned monsters, skilled psychopaths, educated illiterates. Reading, writing are important only if they serve towards making our children more humane. Our institute and teachers have always strived to foster compassion and human values that our founder envisioned. I request all of you to rededicate yourselves to those ideals and carry forward the values imbibed while you were on campus, wherever you go, whichever part of the world you go, because the world needs it. Thank you, Nandri Jai Hind. Honorable Chancellor, I have the honor to request you, sir, to declare the convocation open and deliver your address. Thank you. Esteemed Chief Guest, Honorable Ladyship, Justice B.V. Ramaratnaji, Distinguished Managing Trustee, T. Avinasalingam Trust Institution, Dr. T.S.K. Meenachi Sundaram, our respectable trustees of our institution and the society, Vice Chancellor, Dr. Bharati Harishankar, Registrar, Dr. Kausalya, Controller of Examinations, Dr. Manimuri, members of the Board of Management and Academic Council, deans of various schools, heads of the departments, faculty members, finance and administrative officials, invitees from the judicial world, proud parents, vibrant graduates, invitees and friends from the media. Today is indeed a momentous occasion for our Avinasalingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women deemed to be university, as we have an illustrious and eminent ladyship justice of the Supreme Court of India as a woman of the country and as the chief guest to grace our 33rd convocation of our deemed to be university with their inspiring presence and enthralling convocation address. Honorable Ladyship Justice, in addition to the narration of her credentials already portrayed by our Vice Chancellor Dr. Bharati Harishankar, he is the first women judge elevated to the Supreme Court from the High Court of Karnataka. Her Excellency <laughs> has, has been an initiator for many need-based social awareness ventures and judicial measures like the first ever training module for trial judges about laws on gender, children, and the environment as the chairperson of the Karnataka Judicial Academy. Therefore, it is indeed befitting that on this auspicious day, this renowned women institution of six decades of legacy is privileged and honored to have the gracious and blessing presence of Honorable Ladyship as the Chief Guest of our 33rd Annual Conference, Annual Convocation. With folded arms and full of respect, I heartily welcome you, Madam, on behalf of all the members of the Avinasalingam University for Women. Our Founder Chancellor, Batma Bhushan, Dr. T.S. Avinasalingam Ayya, fondly called as Ayya Avargal by all of us, laid the foundation for women education in this part of the country six decades ago to inculcate high quality education for women embedded in values 
educational discipline and women empowerment. We have always strived to break new grounds in enhancing the academic experience of students, national recognitions and international brand building. The conferring of the A double plus grade during the recent NAC fourth cycle reaccreditation with the highest CGPA of 3.64 out of 4, the fifth rank by the Atal ranking of institution on innovation achievements in the country, and the 75th rank under the national institutional ranking rank among all the universities in the country stands testimony to be vigiled saga of Anna Uni uh, Avinasalingam University for women. Dear graduates, in a world where economics, ethnicity, education, environment, and ethics are becoming increasingly endangered, the greatest challenge is to sustain and nurture value-based education that you have acquired from this great institution. What is essential is to have quality benchmark in all the educational and productivity goals commensurate with the Sustainable Development Goal 4. The world is hopefully re-emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic, maintaining work-life balance, physical and emotional wellness, and spiritual grounding are all seen as imperatives in gauging the productivity quotient of professionals in all fields in the present and future. Therefore, as new graduates, all of you have the immense responsibility to contribute to the country and the world at large by embracing truth, perseverance, and determination while holding concern for the ultimate goal of self-realization and sustainable women development with empowerment as keys to your bright future. It is with great pride I submit during the post nac era of our Avinasalingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education deemed university with the full involvement of all members of the Avinasalingam University family will evolve as the most sought after educational destination for women across the country and internationally through the earnest implementation of the University Vision 2040 through expansion, improving access to the needy and institutionalizing 21st century knowledge, skills and value attributes as the learning outcome. In the academic year 2022-23, the university is resolved to launch the School of Allied Health Sciences to offer undergraduate and postgraduate programs in physician assistant, speech and hearing sciences, respiratory technology, renal dialysis technology, emergency trauma care technology, and clinical psychology to create 100% employability. It will also start the Department of Yoga to offer UG, PG, and PhD programs in yoga and allied sciences with the approval of the University Grants Commission. It will also establish the UGC approved center to promote the open distance learning and online education. It is also to strengthen the Women's Study Center of the university with teaching and research programs as approved by the University Grants Commission. We will always showcase the Avinasalingam Innovation and Incubation Center to promote women entrepreneurs and startups and to evolve it as accelerator of novel products for technology transfer and commercialization. And most importantly, to implement the strategic plan of the mission Avinity developed through the mentoring group of the university for the year 2022-23. Dear graduates, please keep your collaboration with your alma mater as alumni, which would help you to emerge as domain leaders for the future. With these few words, I wish all of you a bright and prosperous future. I acknowledge with gratitude the invaluable support of the University Grants Commission, other APEX organization, our managing trustee Anna, 
and other devoted trustees of the Avinasalingam Trust for Educational Institutions who have shaped the path of success for this institution. I congratulate all the hardworking and inspiring faculty members who have molded you students to reach this stage in your life today. I extend my hearty appreciation and thanks to all the members of the teaching and administrative arms of the institution. Their dedication and tireless efforts have made today a cherishable day. Thank you. Jai Hind. The 33rd Convocation of the Avinasalingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women has been called to confer the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Philosophy, Master of Science, Master of Com Computer Applications, Master of Social Work, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Commerce, Master of Commerce, Computer Applications, MBA Tourism and Travel Management, Master of Education, Master of Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Arts, Commerce, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Physical Education, Bachelor of Vocation, Bachelor of Engineering, Postgraduate Diploma and Advanced Diploma upon the candidates who have been declared successful in the various examinations held from March 2021 to March 2022. I declare the convocation open. Honorable Ladyship Justice, Srimati V. V. Nagaratna, Supreme Court of India, New Delhi. I request you, Madam, to kindly deliver the convocation address. A very good morning to everybody. At the outset, I thank the warm welcome and hospitality that I have received from the management of this institution. It is warmer than the weather in Coimbatore. <laughs> Dr. T.S.K. Meenakshi Sundaram, Managing Trustee of the Avinashalingam Education Trust, Trustees of the Avinashalingam Educational Society, and members of Board of Management and Academic Council of Avinashalingam University for Women, Professor S.P. Tyagarajan, Chancellor, and Dr. Mrs. Bharati Harishankar, Vice Chancellor, Avinashalingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Dr. Mrs. S. Kausalya, Registrar, Deans of various departments and faculty of the university, learned judges of the Coimbatore District Judiciary, and learned members of the bar, distinguished invitees, proud parents and guardians, dear graduating students and medal achievers, members of the press and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the managing trustee, trustees, chancellor and vice chancellor of Avinashalingam Institute of Home Science and Higher Education for Women, deemed to be university for having invited me as the chief guest and to deliver the 33rd convocation address. I am happy to visit Coimbatore, which is a city known for its dynamism and for playing a key role in the development of Tamil Nadu. Coimbatore is also known as the Manchester of South India, 
owing to its large textile industry. I was told that Tirupur is very close by. In Karnataka, Tirupur material, you know, is very well known. And we always seek such, especially the textiles in the form of bed sheets and uh, covers. This university is a haloed university named after Dr. Avinashalingam Ayya, as he was popularly known and addressed. He served as the education minister of the then Madras presidency from 1946 to 1949 and was responsible for introducing Tamil as a language of or medium of instruction in the state of Tamil Nadu. Later, he became a member of the parliament. He was a trained lawyer and practiced in Coimbatore. He came in contact with Mahatma Gandhi and joined the freedom struggle. Dr. Avinash Lingam was inspired by the spirituality of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa and Ma Sharada Devi. This university is a, an example of his foresight to offer value-based holistic education to women. The achievements of the university has been detailed by the Vice Chancellor of the university just now. Dr. Avinash Lingam served as the Founder Chancellor of this university and laid a sturdy and strong foundation. The university has grown and is now functioning with state-of-the-art facilities with thousands of students and hundreds of faculty members. Bearing in mind the vision and dynamism of the founder of this institution, I have chosen to address you all on role of education in nation building. But before that, I must congratulate the university for organizing this convocation as an offline visit, uh, offline function in the presence of parents and guardians and all distinguished invitees, thanks to the low intensity of the COVID-19 pandemic at present. My heartiest congratulations to all the graduating students and medal achievers, to the parents and guardians on, for this occasion who are graduating today. May your graduation be the beginning of many more wonderful achievements in life. Congratulations once again to each one of you. I am humbled and proud to be standing before hundreds of women graduates. And I again congratulate this university for turning out so many graduates. You know, we have a Kannada saying that is, if you, gra if you educate a woman, you educate a family. And you can imagine now, when you have a university for women, you are educating the world. <laughs> May each of the women graduates who are graduating today take the values of this great institution to whichever part of the world you may go. As your chancellor just now said, the values of this institution should remain with you, nurture you in your future endeavors, and to be transmitted to the next generation. Congratulations again. Now, coming to the topic of my address, I'll make it very brief, although it is a longish address. We are all aware that education always has a significant role to play in nation building. As I told you, my topic is education, role of education in nation building. Mass education was in pre-independent societies used as a means for revolution. It was used to change individual preferences by indoctrinization. Education before independence of nations from colonial rule did not have any social welfare motive. As nations became independent, 
The goal of education systems transformed to increase mobility and productivity to cope with the demands of industrialization and now globalization. However, education as I speak of today is not with reference to the context that I have just narrated. I would like to underline the difference between formal education and functional education. Formal education may serve as a starting point to verify one's achievements. It could be in the form of university education, vocational education or skill development, suitable for a career or calling in life. But functional education is of utmost importance. It is a process through which an individual is transformed into a participant in the social and economic development of his or her society and of the nation. Thus, the true essence of education lies in developing knowledge as well as character. In the words of Mahatma Gandhi, education without character is evil. That is what your Vice Chancellor narrated of a person who wrote about the developments and knowledge of science and engineering and as to how it was used during the Second World War. Swami Vivekananda said that education is not only for getting information, rather it should develop character, mental powers, intelligence and inculcate self-confidence together with self-reliance. Thus, the true essence of education lies in developing knowledge as well as character. However, presently, in the Indian scenario, most of the educational institutions seem to be concentrating on achieving proficiency of students in a particular branch of knowledge, but not training them to be good citizens of the country or to enhance national values and practice eternal values of human society. In my view, education is not only an instructional process but is a social process. It provides intellectual, philosophical and ethical exercise and training to the people of a nation. It plays a pivotal role in developing a country in every aspect, be it social, cultural, moral development. Accordingly, the role of education in national development of a country cannot be denied. Education is a platform that trains the needed talent for national development with an aim to achieve political, economic, social, moral and cultural aspirations which leads the country towards advancement and fosters national development. In my humble view, the quality of a nation's education determines the level of its national development. A nation is built by its citizens. Citizens are molded by teachers and teachers are made by teacher educators. Chanakya, the great ancient thinker said, a teacher is the maker of a nation. Thus a teacher can be rightly called a nation builder. This is my message to all the deans and teachers and faculties of this institution. It is said that in nation building activities, education is a powerful lever to uplift the poor. It should therefore be correlated to the social, economic, political needs of our developing nation, fostering secular values and it should act as an instrument of social change. Education system should be so devised as to meet these realities. I said that education helps in nation building. What is nation building? I wish to discuss the meaning of nation building and the components which would make the process of nation building holistic in every sense. In my view, the following factors are essential for nation building. One, committed leadership. Two, good governance. Three, national character. Four, a stable economy. Five, good infrastructure. Six, good political culture. And seven, community support. 
I underlined that education is an essential facet which would help us achieve every one of these seven factors. While the government, whether at the central or the state government, may at best be facilitator for nation building, collective support and endeavor of the citizens is essential to realize the fruits of nation building. Nation building cannot be achieved without nurturing within citizens their own creativity on the one hand and their instinct to render their services to the nation on the other hand. The freedom fighters who got us independence from colonial rule and the founding fathers of our constitution had a keen foresight and the ability to secure values for the progress of our nation. Those values are enshrined in the preamble of our constitution. India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Justice, liberty, equality and fraternity are the core values of our nation. While the constitution has placed certain responsibilities on the state, for achieving core values in the form of fundamental duties and directive principles of state policy, which are in parts three and four of the constitution. The values which have to be followed by every citizen of India are in part 4A of the constitution, that is in article 51A in the form of fundamental duties. These duties of a citizen highlight inter alia upholding of sovereignty, unity, and integrity of India, to promote harmony in the spirit of common brotherhood among the people of India, to preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture, to protect and improve the nat natural environment, to safeguard public property and abjure violence, to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity, so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels with scientific temper, humanism, and the spirit of inquiry and reform. Parents and guardians have to provide for educational opportunities to the children. I draw sustenance from the aforesaid fundamental duties of the citizens to elaborate as to how if the said duties are followed by our people in the country in their true letter and spirit, India as a nation would progress faster. These values in part 4A of the constitution, known as fundamental duties, are values of an ideal citizenship and concern nation building. Hence, education is necessary for becoming an ideal or an enlightened citizen. Who is an ideal citizen? According to Right Honorable V. S. Srinivasa Shastri, an educator and an ace politician of this part of India, there are three basic postulates which make an ideal citizen. One, a sense of public spirit, meaning by that, the desire to sink his own personal ends in the larger ends of his community. The anxiety to subordinate himself whenever necessary for the benefit of the society of which he is a member. Two, that the citizen should have what we regard as practical common sense, a shrewd eye on the affairs of the world, and three, that the citizen must be able to understand and appreciate what lies at the bottom of the welfare of society. That is, what are the different elements that go to make up that welfare. A training of a citizen is not complete unless it includes a preparation, not only to understand, but to value and promote the constituents of social welfare. Thus, in every educational institution, apart from imparting the various subjects of proficiency to the students, there must be imparting of value-based education or value education, which is the need of the hour in our country. Thus, to be an ideal citizen of a nation, certain external values of man have to be not only imbibed, imparted, but practiced. I would categorize the values as internal values and external values which are interlinked. What are internal values? These are those values which are required to be imbibed by an individual so as to practice them in his day-to-day -day living. Such values are honesty, integrity, humility, and ability to avoid anger, greed, lust, pride, and envy. 
it is these values which enhance the qualities of a man external values are values of good citizenship which are not only ingrained in fundamental duties referred to above but also values such as good conduct etiquette in public sphere etc some of the values of family life are gender equality recognition of the role of each member of the family for maintaining good family life one of the most important values is to keep public life separate from private life to eschew corruption and greed misuse of office for private gain and to strictly maintain honesty and integrity in public life this is what has to be emphasized in our educational institutions who is responsible to inculcate all these values to the citizens in my view it is not just the parents and guardians of the child but the teachers in the educational institutions who have a duty to impart these values in young minds of children so that they become enlightened citizens of our nation therefore the role of education in nation building is fundamental and primordial i have a great regard for teachers and their role in educating children and young adults whether in the school or in the colleges or even in the post graduate institutions according to albert albert einstein education has two central functions relating to the individual and the society one to educate the individual as a free individual and two to educate the individual as a part of society on the philosophy of education in schools albert einstein said the school has always been the most important means of transferring the wealth of tradition from one generation to the next sometimes one sees in the school simply the instrument for transferring a certain maximum quantity of knowledge to the growing children it should develop in the young individuals those qualities and capabilities which are of value for the welfare of the common wealth but that does not mean that individuality should be destroyed and the individual should become a mere tool of the community like a bee or an ant on the contrary the aim must be the training of independently acting and thinking individuals who see in the service of the community their highest life problem india being a republic and having adopted democracy as a system of governance expects high values to be practiced not only by those in government but also the citizens of the country but democracy cannot succeed fully with ignorance and lack of discipline though educational facilities are now within the reach of large numbers the quality of education is not high it is easier to get into a school or college but more difficult to get educated we are taught to read but not trained to think mass impulses emotions and class resentments sometimes take an upper hand in my view if democracy is to be fostered in our country then it would entirely depend on the role of education in the building of the na nation for democracy has to be sustained on the bedrock of certain values of citizenship and those values have to be taught imbibed and practiced by each one of us thus in india education must lead to building of our nation based on democratic values for the building of a nation what is of utmost importance in my view is the molding of young minds what does that mean children who attend schools come from diverse backgrounds they would have imbibed certain values from their family the value of each value system of each family is different standards of ethics and morality may vary but it is in the school or an educational institution that a uniformity and consensus in the value system could be brought about by the teacher for this to happen there must firstly be identification of the fundamental values of human life or what could be called as eternal or ethical values required for the sustenance of our society in our country 
these values have remained constant over time and for centuries and would have to be handed from generation to generation by the teachers their responsibility is so very high in our country it is not difficult to identify these values simply put these are values of public life and private life or values of good citizenship i would like to give a few examples because this is a graduation and therefore some food for thought for the young graduates and something to take home apart from their certificates and medals what are those that have to be taught to our young children and young minds the need for maintaining a clean environment in the city town or village the importance of forests wildlife lakes rivers and to sustain a balance in economy ecology and environment which must be taught to them the importance of our history and geography india's cultural wealth india's art and architecture about our museums and monuments and all our symbols of culture which have to be protected from destruction must be imbibed by young minds in family life gender equality must be emphasized teachers must educate parents and guardians as well as young boys to treat a girl and a boy on equal terms gender roles can no longer be stereotyped family being an important bedrock of our society must be nurtured and always protected it is because some parents and teachers have failed to inculcate and teach young boys as to how they should deal with young girls and women that we have so much of crime in society against women what is the reason for heinous crimes being committed against women girl child or for that matter even older women are our women safe within the household or outside the whole household on the public spaces respect for women being an important value in society has to be inculcated in the minds of young boys as this would go a long way in securing the safety of women in the country i am conscious of the fact that there are no graduating boys here but all of us girls here should realize and understand what it is to be safe in the household and outside the whole household the importance of safety and security it can be only felt if it is really there and not is not illusory we as women greatly seek safety and security both inside the house in the household in the family and on the public street therefore our young boys young men must be impressed imparted to respect women more importantly education must inculcate in students as to how they must keep their public life separate from private life when they assume public offices to be more emphatic a child must be empowered by the teacher in an educational institution to tell a parent that he or she would not like to be a beneficiary of anything which is earned by a parent by illegal means or by assets generated beyond the known sources of income now the time has come for children to impress upon the parents and to question the parents about a life of integrity and honesty uh, our uh, generation or a generation of parents and guardians have failed in this regard now therefore the time has come for the children to question the parents to lead a life of integrity and honesty and not to be the beneficiaries of 
any ill-gotten wealth. Similarly, since I'm addressing a large number of women graduates, I must tell you that education and financial independence would only mean greater tolerance, fostering of family values, and care for our family. The greater the edu education of women should lead to greater fostering of the family life. Teachers must impress upon students who wish to take up a career in various professional fields that they ought not to indulge in any shortcuts or sharp practices for earning wealth in an unethical way. Further and most important is that the students, children, young men and women of India must be told to inculcate a love for our nation and motherland with all her diversities, which is so very unique to our country. We are strong because of unity in diversity. This is very significant for a stronger nation and society. These, in my views, are some of the important aspects of education towards building of our nation. A citizenry of a nation lacking in moral or ethical values can only destroy the nation. For democracy to be enriched in our country, we need citizens who practice ethics in their lives, whether in the public or private sphere. As your Vice Chancellor, Professor Tyagarajan, just now said, take and carry the values that you have learnt in this great institution along with you, wherever you may go and wherever you may be. The values should continue to remain with you and they should be practiced and given to the next generation after you. Education in these eternal values which are also in the form of fundamental duties, which I referred to in the beginning of my speech, enshrined in our constitution, would ultimately help in building our nation into a stronger one. Increase in the quantity of education, as measured by the mean years of schooling or the number of people having access to education, has for a long time been the central focus of policy makers. No doubt, increasing access to education is important, but the actual goal of education should be quality education, which would be able to produce individuals who are equipped with a sense of responsibility, moral and intellectual maturity, which they can apply towards achieving societal, national, and international goals. While the number of educational institutions, whether at the school level, college level, or at the university level is increasing every day, it is important to question and understand whether the education imparted by these institutions meets the societal needs by producing individuals who are equipped to meet the challenges of the nation and the society and the professional world in which they would step into. These challenges include delivering quality work on the professional front while maintaining a high degree of integrity and morals and to always strive to take the nation to greater heights. While there is a good amount of empirical data on the access to education, we know much less about the quality of education that is being imparted. Accreditation agencies engage in conducting a study based on various yardsticks and accordingly rating an educational institution. However, the outcomes of education are seldom measured from the standpoint of moral and intellectual maturity of outgoing students. The outcome of education is at most measured in terms of ability of the graduates to secure employment. In my view, the process adopted to gauge the quality of education needs to be re-evaluated having regard to considerations such as moral and intellectual maturity, norms and values of outgoing students, and ability of students to self-regulate themselves. This 
is very important, is a message for the accreditation agencies. The present society is fast becoming more and more materialistic and is being driven away from spiritual and human values. This challenge has to be met by the educational institutions in our country. Finally, I come back to the thoughts of Swami Vivekananda on nation building. He said that the country can progress only if each and every citizen can progress. Only law or government cannot ensure the progress of society. It is always society that has to get working for its own welfare and that of the nation. To achieve the same, we need to prepare our children for building a stronger India. And last but not the least, until women of this country achieve progress, there can be no progress for the nation. These are some of my views on the topic. I once again thank Dr. Avinashalingam University and the organizers of this function for having invited me to be the chief guest of the 33rd convocation and giving me an opportunity to share a few of my thoughts on the role of education in nation building. I thank you for your kind attention and for bearing with my longish address. Thank you once again. Namaskar. Let the candidates be now presented for PhD and MPhil degrees of the schools. Respected Chancellor, I have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy and Master of Philosophy who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the respective degrees. A total of 72 PhDs and 22 MPhils may be admitted into their respective schools. I request the candidates to come to the dais as I read out the names and receive the degrees. Totally 72 PhDs, School of Home Science, Resource Management, Chamila, present. Come. Tamilovia, SA, from R Food Service Management and Dietetics. Food Science and Nutrition, Anita R. Nidhi Goyal, Rajya Lakshmi Devi, Y. Lakshmi Jitendra <laughs> 
School of Biosciences, Bonupriya SJS. Nitya Devi M. They are from biochemistry. Purnima A. Next is Sushila B. Manju P. Next, Department of Biotechnology, Ramya K. Ramya, please come. Valsala P. Ah, Zenith V M H. Point in Ma, yeah. Indumati G. Sindhu M S. School of Physical Sciences and Computational Sciences, Mathematics, Sudha ASM, Soumya S, Meenakshi PL, Loganai Ki P, Agalya Devi K, Sangeeta N, Sangeeta, Ma, Sangeeta Va, Nila M. From Physics, Selva Priya R, Siphonisa O, from Chemistry, Hepsiba Maggie. Sandhya S. Silpa R Shashi Reka K is Computer Science Department, Manju D. Kema D. Krishnaveni N. Manon Mani M. Kavita D. Manon Mani.
கவிதா டி சபிதா பானு ஏ வனிதா என் சூரியபிரபா எம் நெக்ஸ்ட் ஸ்கூல் ஆஃப் ஆர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் சோசியல் சயின்சஸ் டோட்டலி செவன்டீன் பிஹெச்டிஸ் கல்பனா ஆர் கல்யாணி சி ஜாஸ்மின் கவிதா என்பி நெக்ஸ்ட் சீதா லக்ஷ்மி எஸ் நெக்ஸ்ட் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் இங்கிலீஷ் பேர்லைன் பிரிசில்லா ஹுசைனி இர்ஃபான் சௌமியா டி இளங்கோதை எம் போயிடுங்க போயிடுங்க சிந்தியாவினி India Vini Next Department of Music Kavita Yes One is one Next Department of Counseling Psychology Suganthi V Divya Sundaram ராஜலட்சுமி எஸ்ஏ அனுரேகா டி கே யோகேஸ்வரி எஸ் ஜாஃப்ரின் மார்க்கெட் ஜே நீங்க தானம்மா ஓ இவங்க இன்னும் போக இல்லையா டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்கூல் ஆஃப் காமர்ஸ் அண்ட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் காமர்ஸ் சரஸ்வதி ராஜரத்னம் அகிலா எம் இங்கே வந்துருங்க இங்கே வந்து ஆர்த்தி டி லேகா ஸ்ரீ எஸ் ரூபியா எஸ் department of tourism management satya bhamavadi school of education education valsa
PC Sandana Lakshmi T Sangeeta Special Education Ravidi M School of Engineering Computer Science and Engineering Tamil Mani G Nithya D Nita KP Civil Engineering Deepika K Aishwarya Lakshmi PT Mphil Totally 22 School of Home Science Monika Chanu Prinsky Joshila Devi Nunna Amulya Next women studies, Jyoti Priya P. Rashida Begum A. School of Biosciences, Biochemistry, Pridashni M. Botany, Nishana A.S. Manjula Devi S. Yes. School of Physical Sciences and Computational Sciences, Mathematics, Lin C. L. Chemistry, Nandini D. Renuka Devi G. School of Arts and Social Sciences. Okay. Music. Vidya TK. Ma, Vidya T. Gara, Panga Munadi on the knee, money. Roshini, we know Marvelia, Uma Music Vidya T. K. Physical Education Benil Dry Rancy. Okay. Thank you.
Honorable Ladyship Justice, the Chief Guest of today's function, I have the honor to request you, Madam, to award the medals to the students who have secured first rank in the university examinations. Respected Chancellor, I have the honor to present unto you the following postgraduate and undergraduate candidates for the award of the medals. The medal winners for undergraduates, Srimati Jaya Murugesan Award for the subject interior design goes to Hasna Fatima D. Srimati Alamelu Narayanan Award for food service Srimati Alamelu Narayanan Award for Food Service Management and Dietetics goes to Reshma Susan Babu. Srimati Narayani Rama Warrior Award for Food Science and Nutrition goes to Sai Raksha S. Mrs. P. Saraswati Award for Textiles and Apparel Designing goes to Kavi Bharati M. Srimati R. Janakamal Award for Human Development goes to Tushara K. R. Shri O.P. Narula Award, Rural Development and Sociology goes to Meha Shri V.S. Shri Edward Devadas Award for Biochemistry goes to Deepthi Shri R. Shri Shri PSK Murthy Award for Biotechnology goes again to Deepthi Shri R. Shri T.S. Avinashinam Award for Chemistry goes to Divya K. Srimati TMS Muttamal Award for Zoology goes to Kirtika B. Srimati Pankajamal Award for Botany is backed by Sweta M. Sri Nelayapan Janakiyamal Award for Physics goes to Sandhya M. Sri Ramasamy Naidu Award for Mathematics goes to Dharani M. Srimati Shubha Nyanadurai Ramesh Award for Computer Science goes to Pooja G. Master K. Vivek Award for Computer Applications goes to Nirmal Kavi M.G. Sri Raya Chokalingam Award for Tamil goes to Subala K. Shri C.K. Kumarasamy Gounder Award for Economics goes to Renu Kavi. Mm -hmm. 
Srimati Shyamala Shivanandam Award for English goes to Harita B. Shri Roshanlal Gupta Award for Functional Hindi goes to Ishwari A. Srimati Bhavani Shivarama Pillai Award for Music goes to Aishwarya C. Srimati S. Mangair Karasi Award for Commerce goes to Lakshana S. Srimati Saraswati Dorisami Award for BCom Computer Applications goes to Barani Shri S. Shri Opi Narula Award BCom Professional Accounting goes to Radha V. Shri Idayam Rajendran Award for BBA Tourism goes to Harsha K. Shri R. Rama Rao Award for Visual Communication goes to Shri Jayadurga R.D. Shri K.S. Vishwanathan Award for information technology goes to Neena Priyadarshini T. Shri Ahmed Khan Award for Physician Assistant goes to Akila K. The Postgraduate Medal Winners Shri N. V. Paulos Nadakal Award for Interior Design and Resource Management goes to Vishnu Varshini S. Shri A. N. Ishwaran Award for Food Service Management and Dietetics goes to Carol Simon. Dr. Rajamal P. Devadas Award for Food Science and Nutrition goes to Mubashira VA. Shri SRP Charities Award Textiles and Fashion Apparel goes to Shiva Darshini S. Shri Mati Arun Selvi Diraviyam Award for human development goes to Akansha Sri Vatsava. Shri T.A. Ramalinga Chetiyar Award for Extension and Communication goes to Joshita K.J. Shri C.V. Mulk Award for Master of Social Work goes to Parnika R. Shri Veerana Chetiyar Award for Biochemistry goes to Udaya Darshini S. Shri Mati Nirmala K. Murthy Award for Biotechnology goes to Jain C. Jayan. Shri Mati Nyanabai Giri Award for Bioinformatics goes to Vishnu Priya O. Srimati Lakshmi N. Menon Award for Chemistry goes to Surudhi V.
Shri C. V. Ramamurthy Award for Zoology goes to Geeta Mala G. V. Shri B. Jack Award for Botany goes to Kani Moli M. Shri Mati Nalayapan Periyanan Award for Physics goes to Kavya Shri PJ. Shri Anamal Subaraman Award for Mathematics goes to Gomati N. Shri Mati Shubhan Yanadurai Award for Computer Science goes to Zunaita B. Shri Mati Shubhan Yanadurai Award for Computer Application goes to Padma K. Shri K.S. Ramasamy Award for Tamil goes to Indu S. Shri Mati Rajamal Award for Economics goes to Deepika K. Shri Mati Valliyamai Award for English goes to Nitya Shri M. Shri R.A.M. Perumal Award for Business Administration goes to Hannah Priscilla M. Shri M. Ambigai Velu Award for MBA Finance goes to Vidya R. Shri Mati Kalavati Award for MBA IT Organization and Administration goes to Shiva Kartika P. Master S.R. Sangeet Raj Award MBA IT Human Resource goes to Shirley MBA IT Human Resource goes to Shirley Roshna R. Shri T.S. Dandabani Chetiyar Award for Applied Psychology goes to Ramya T. Shri Mati R.A.M. Kupatayamal Award for MCOM Computer Applications goes to Sandhya S. Dr. Rajamal P. Devadas Award Music goes to Divya N. Srimati Sushila Balagurusami Award for Tourism and, and Travel Management goes to Ashish Kanwarji. Shri Mati Rani Lata Palnisami Award for Commerce goes to Ramya S. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Purushottaman Award for Information Technology goes to Kripavati M. Faculty of Education Medal winners, Shri R. Subramaniam Award B. Ed. Practicals goes to Meena Priyadarshini A. Shri K. S. Krishnaraj Award Special Education overall goes to Raja Prabha K.
Srimati M. Chandramani Award Special Education Practical goes to Aragu Sivagami T. Srimati Bhavani Shivarama Pillai Award for BP Ed goes to Kirtana S. Srimati Anama Cheryan Award for BSc Physical Education goes to Nitya Tilagavati S. Faculty of Education Postgraduate Medal Winners Sri R. Subramaniam Award MED Overall goes to RTV. Dr. M. Chandramani Award for MED Special Education Hearing Impairment goes to Lata P. Srimati Malini Lionel Award, MED Special Education Visual Impairment goes to Reshma N. Faculty of Engineering Undergraduate Medal Winners, Srimati Rajamal P. Devdas Award, Biomedical Instrumentation Engineering goes to Deepika V. Srimati Saumiya Lakshmi Award for Computer Science and Engineering goes to Eileen Mona. Sri R. Ramarao Award for Civil Engineering goes to Gausia Parveen. Dr. Rajamal P. Devdas Award Electronics and Communication Engineering goes to Subhashini M.J. Shri V.K. Haider Khan Award Food Processing and Preservation Technology goes to Shruti R. Chennai Alumni Award Printing Technology goes to Agasti Devi A. Faculty of Engineering Postgraduates Srimati S. Rukmani Radha Krishnan Award for Medical Electronics goes to Pavitra S. Sita Padmanabhan Award for Food Technology goes to Akshara M. Sri T.S. Avinashlingam Award, Computer Science and Engineering, goes to Divya K. Bachelor of Vocation, Undergraduates. Sri M.C. Madhavan Award, Food Processing and Engineering, goes to Sharvada R. Srimati P. Saraswati Award, Medical Equipment Technology goes to Dharani S. Self-Financing Courses, Sri T. S. Avinashilingam Award for BA English goes to Bhuvaneshwari K. Sri T. S. Avinashilingam Award, BCom goes to VGH. Sri T.S. Avinashlingam Award for B.Sc. Mathematics goes to Swati M. Sri T.S. Avinashlingam Award B.Sc. Psychology goes to Deepalakshmi R. Sri T.S. Avinashlingam Award M.A. English goes to Mauna Priya K. Sri T.S. Avinashlingam Award M.Sc. Mathematics goes to Vijay Lakshmi S. Sri Dayam Rajendran Award, B.Sc. Psychology goes to Adira P. Her parent will receive the award. Sh 
as she is studying abroad her mother is receiving the medal the medal the medal winners for the uh, attending ceremony the, who are not attending the ceremony in person are shrimati kamala ranganathan award for biotextiles pg goes to shami nagashangwa and shri edward devadas award b ed overall general goes to savita hari thank you we will now have the presentation of candidates let the candidates be now presented from the school of home science respected chancellor i have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the master of science master of social work and bachelor of science degrees in the school of home science who have been certified yes. after They're examination to be duly qualified to receive the respective degrees a total of 428 post graduates 307 ugs and 32 pg diplomas may be admitted into the school of home science congratulations students let the candidates be now presented from the school of bio sciences respected chancellor i have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the master of science and bachelor of science degrees in the school of bio sciences who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the respective degrees a total of 88 post graduates and 207 undergraduates may be admitted into the school of bio sciences let the candidates be now presented from the school of physical sciences and computational sciences respected chancellor i have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the master of science master of computer applications bachelor of science and bachelor of computer application degrees in the school of physical sciences and computational sciences who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the respective degrees a total of 110 post graduates 419 undergraduates and one advanced diploma may be admitted into the school of physical sciences and computational sciences thank you let the candidates be now presented from the school of arts and social sciences respected chancellor i have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the master of science master of arts bachelor of science and bachelor of arts degrees in the school of arts and social sciences who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive their respective degrees a total of 67 post graduates 306 undergraduates and 13 post graduate diplomas may be admitted into the school of arts and social sciences let the candidates be now presented from the school of commerce and management respected chancellor i have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the master of business administration master of commerce mcom computer application mba tourism and travel management bachelor of uh, commerce bachelor of business administration degree in the school of commerce and management who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the respective degrees 
a total of 121 postgraduates and 332 undergraduates may be admitted into the school of commerce and management thank you let the candidates be now presented from the school of education respected chancellor i have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the master of education bachelor of education bachelor of science and the bachelor of physical education degrees in the school of education who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive the respective degrees a total of 13 post graduates and 204 undergraduates may be admitted into the school of education Let the candidates be now presented from the School of Engineering. Respected Chancellor, I have the honor to present unto you the candidates for the Master of Engineering, Bachelor of Engineering, Bachelor of Vocation degrees in the School of Engineering who have been certified after examination to be duly qualified to receive their respective degrees. A total of 900 post graduates and 273 undergraduates may be admitted into the school of engineering all the candidates are now requested to raise please stand up by virtue of the authority vested in me as chancellor of avinasalingam institute for home science and higher education for women i admit you to the degree of doctor of philosophy master of philosophy master of science master of social work master of computer applications master of business administration master of commerce mcom computer applications mba tourism and travel management master of arts master of education master of engineering bachelor of science bachelor of computer applications bachelor of arts bachelor of commerce bachelor of education bachelor of physical education bachelor of business administration bachelor of engineering and bachelor of vocation in the respective schools of this institution and in token thereof you have been presented with those degrees and i authorize you to wear the robes ordained as insignia of your degrees please remain standing and repeat the pledge that will be administered to you i hereby solemnly declare and promise that i will in my thoughts words and deeds uphold the great ideals of the avinasam institute for home science and higher education for women namely simplicity high thinking indian culture spiritual values service to the community particularly to the poor and downtrodden national integration and academic excellence you may now be seated
I dissolve the convocation. Vote of thanks by Registrar Dr. S. Kausalya. Good afternoon, everybody. With the blessings of Guru Maharaj and our esteemed founder president, Ayya Avargal, and the first chancellor, Amma Avargal's blessings, we thank everyone for conducting successfully the 33rd convocation today. Congratulations to all of us, especially the graduating students of undergraduation, post-graduation, MPhil and PhD. First of all, on behalf of all of us, I wholeheartedly thank our esteemed Chief Guest, Honorable Ladyship Justice, Mrs. B. V. Nagaratna, Honorable Judge, Supreme Court of India, New Delhi, for having accepted our invitation and have given a remarkable and inspirational address. Madam, you have just taught us how education helps in youth empowerment, women empowerment, and to build up the confidence in youth with boldness and to face the challenges of the world, especially during post-COVID scenario. And we have understood what is behind the factors behind education in national building. Thank you very much, Madam <laughs> Justice. And I wholeheartedly thank our most respected managing trustee, Anna Avargal, Dr. Meenakshi Sundaram Anna, for all his guidance throughout the convocation and also for guiding us in the path shown by the visionaries, Ayya Avargal and Amma Avargal, and blessing all the children who are graduating today. Thank you very much, Anna. I thank our most honorable chancellor, the chairman of today's 33rd convocation, Professor S.P. Tyagarajan, for his meticulous guidance throughout the preparation and today's convocation. And sir, for your convocation address, kindling the interest in national education policy and vision 2040, and also honoring the MPhil and PhD graduates with their certificates. Thank you very much, sir. I have the honor to thank our Vice Chancellor, Madam, Dr. Bharati Harishankar, for her continued guidance and the welcome address and the annual report of the convocation. Thank you, Madam. I thank all the trustees who have assembled in full attendance, who are actually driving us in the right path shown by our visionaries. Thank you very much, trustees, for your presence today. And we thank the family members of the trustees for leading us with good spirit and guidance and support always. Thank you all. We thank the judiciaries, especially Sri Balu sir and Sri Sendil Raja, Judicial Magistrate number two from Coimbatore for helping us in the conduct of convocation and for all the assistance and the medal sponsors, our own teachers, thank you very much, and all our well-wishers and police officials and all the other government officials who have come in large numbers to support our students. Thank you very much. I, on behalf of the Amina Shillingham Trust and the Education Institution, thank the honorable members of the Board of Management, the highest statutory body, with whose guidance that we are running all the academic and administrative matters. Thank you, Honorable Board of Management members. Thank you very much. I take pleasure in thanking our Honorable members of Academic Council for their continued support. Academic Council members for their continued support in our academic activities and also instilling the spirit of new education policy in all the curricula. Thank you very much. I thank the Assistant Registrar Academic 
Dr. R. Parimala and her team and her entire office and in coordination with the controller of examinations for preparing the 2,734 certificates. I thank ARSC and her team for preparing this verification and thank all the teachers and I thank all the students for accepting the degrees today in person even during the COVID-19 situation. And I thank our public relations officer for all arrangements, logistics and bringing in the press in large amounts and thank you sir, public relations officer for all your support. I thank the engineer for his logistics and finance officer for the support rendered throughout the convocation. Thank you very much. And I thank the press and media who have covered in yesterday's press, media, today and also tomorrow because you are going to be the connect between the institution and the community. Thank you very much, press and media personnel. I thank the parents who have come in large numbers to support us to witness the outcome of higher education in our esteemed university. Thank you, parents. And I thank the students and rank holders who have come in really large numbers. I think whoever has applied in person, all have come and let us clap for yourselves and ourselves that this is going to be the witness for women empowerment today. Thank you all. And wishing you many more laurels in your life and career to come. And I wish to thank the main conveners of the convocation, Dr. Kalpana, Professor Computer Science, Dr. K. Shanti, Professor Zoology, Dr. Christina Rebecca, Professor English, and all the subcommittee members of all the committees, right from prayer, invitation, all the committees. Let's give a big hand to them. They have worked day and night to bring the day of today's convocation into great success. And I thank our medals sponsors, our own teacher, Dr. Nirmala Krishnamurti. And other teachers who are present here. Pangaja Madam who has come in person to witness the medal sponsored by them and all the other medal sponsors. Thank you very much, Madam. So let us rededicate for the cause of education, women education, and thank you all. Vanakam, Jai Hind, and Namaste. National anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe bharata bhagya vidhata Punjab sindh gujarata maratha dravida utkala banga Bindya himachala yamuna ganga utchala jaladhita ranga तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाधा जनगण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे We request all the students to be standing until the pageantry and procession proceeds. Thank you very much. <laughs> 